Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to put together RX Tongs number sixes or RX sixes uh, that they sell over on their website over at Crafty Apple. Um, and I will show, and that's over on Etsy. I'll put the link to their website and anything I can find there about the company over there. I was provided these free of charge and this is not a paid sponsorship. So there you go, there's all that mess right up front, full disclosure. Um, they sent these over here, friends of the channel, and wanted to, me to take a look at these and you know just show everyone how these are done. So that's what I am intending on doing with these videos. We've already taken a look at the farrier tongs that they had. Uh, I believe those were the nines. I, and then we also took at the very first, we took a look at the first tongs, which are ones, number ones, if you will, which are your basic standard uh, bar stock tongs or flat stock tongs, or basically just plain tongs. Flat nibs, you can make them whatever you want. Um, so we already took a look at those two. I will put links to those down in the description down below, and they'll also be at the end of this video. So make sure to watch all the way through. So these are gonna be box jaw tongs in a sense. Um, we are still gonna be using them. We're still gonna be doing twisting of them. They're still twist tongs, um, and, but they have a little bit of a different caveat because these wings here are entirely too thick to bend up at right angles. So we will have to do some thinning down there and that will have a little bit more on the trickier forging side of things, but not too horribly bad. I hope to show you an easy method of thinning those out and turning those into um, the nibs that stick up for the box to hold your spar stock. Anywho, so yeah, without further ado, let's get these in the fire. We will get, we will get the first jaw portion or the bottom part that's going to be the box. We will work on it first and uh, go from there. Okay, so here we go. So unlike in previous videos where we have went ahead and twisted this to begin with, we're going to leave this in the flat orientation while we work on these nibs. Now I have to decide what I'm going to do, which way I'm going to go first. I'm going to work on this one on a block set in the anvil for this purpose. If you give me a second. Work that out, let it spread a little bit. Then I'm gonna go ahead and hammer that back. And then I'm gonna work on the other side. Now this is a radius block in the anvil. Um, you can make these really easily. It's just a hardy hole. If you don't have something that you put If you don't have something that you can put in the hardy hole of your anvil, like this radius block, you can obviously just do it on the edges. But what we need to do is we need to thin out those wings a little bit. So we'll get another heat on that, and I'll talk a little bit more about this radius block. So I was using half on half off blows. This radius block allows me to get to both sides like this without being impeded. If I try to go to the edge of the anvil, I'm going to have to stand weird and crooked than my normal forging stance versus just straight on like this. I can move it like so and work out both those wings, if you will. So it's really handy to take and have that. Now, barring, say you don't have a radius block or you know the ability to make a really nice clean hardy or something of that nature, take whatever size bar stock you have for your hardy hole, let it go all the way through and hit the base of your anvil somewhere and leave, you know, maybe two inches sticking out of the top, heat that up and then drive on that and hammer upset that material and then re-square it and then you'll have a radius block, just like so. Um, so you don't always have to work from larger stock down if you don't have the power tools, you can go from smaller stock and just upset up to what you need. All right, so I'll go ahead and hammer this up again. You can draw that other one out. Really, I need to get it equal in size and dimension. That's not looking too bad. All right. Go ahead and brush that. Now 
Now, we're going to bend away from that shoulder that we just created. We're going to bend away from that shoulder in this next heat. We're going to do that again on the radius block, hammering here and then hammering there. And then we will close it up in this orientation here. All right, so here we go. We're going to go ahead and hammer that down. Just using kind of like offset it blows. Same on this side a little bit, just to get them going. And there you have it. They're going pretty swell. You might have to adjust these arms out as you go here. Again, the radius block can really help here in this. And you're going to want to adjust these later on to actual bar stock. But this is the this is the general principle here. You get these bent up like so. Now, if you want to adjust this to whatever bar stock that you're wanting, say it's one inch wide or 25 mil wide, that's what you'd put in here. You put your 25 mil wide bar stock or your one inch, whatever that is. So say maybe that's one inch. You would put that in there like so. I'll just go ahead and use this here as a good example. You'll get it put in there and then you'll go ahead and dress these. But you'll probably want to wait on dressing this up until you've made your bend and you've put your other jaw together. That way, whatever adjustment you have to do to get them set up will be better. But there you have it. That's it. Pretty simple adjustment. That's one inch. So that's what I did there. Just adjusted them to hold one inch material. Bada bing, bada boom, nothing to it. Consequently, one other thing that you could do instead of drawing away from the shoulders like I did there, you could always just lay one in and then just hammer a taper from the center out. And that might be a little bit easier for you. I feel that it's a little sharper look if you hammer away from a nice uh, boss area, uh, away from those corners. I feel like it comes out just a little bit better. So now let's go ahead and get this back in the fire and then we're ready to take and twist this jaw. Oakley doakley. So there we go. Gonna grip the boss and the vise. Again, right nice and even with the thing. We're also going to use this bending fork that they sent with this uh, tong set here. And we are gonna go counterclockwise rotation, just like before. and get that nice and evened up. So we'll also probably use this larger tong here to get that nice and evened up a little bit to where it's nice and square-like. Good. Now we can go ahead and brush that off. Now I am seeing one other thing that might have hurt me just a little bit, which it could have, with an order of operation, maybe we should have changed one of the order operations. Maybe we should have twisted this first. That way we could have hammered out our twist first and then went ahead and done the jaws. It was easier to take and do the nibs while it was all in the straight, flat, laid out position but now it's kind of blocking us from hammering out this twist. So we might just have to, you know, file that twist out if it doesn't look so great. Um, we might just hammer this little portion off here, but there's probably not a whole lot we can do here until we finish shaping up um, the jaws themselves. Putting the whole thing together, we can hammer on this a little bit when we're adjusting everything. So that's just uh, kind of a thing to notate there. I've got this other piece, the other half of the jaws heated up here, almost hot enough to come out. And again, we're going to go counterclockwise rotation on this, gripping the boss and the vise, just like we did on the other one. Grip it nice and close like, and go ahead and give that nice counter rotation there as well. So there we have it. I might straighten that up just to fuzz. It's a little off. There we go. Again, super handy tool.
Um, thank you, RX Songs, for sending this over. This will, this bending fork here will get a lot of use in my workshop. Um, it could. One thing I might do to it is I might actually forge this out and give it a little hanging handle. We might do that in a video as well at some point. Be on the lookout for it. Okay, so now we got one pair of tongs here. Let's give this a quick brush. In the vise, so why not? A butcher block brush on there. Choo -choo. That brush down. Now we're going to heat both these jaws back up and hammer out the twist the best we can. But there you go. Those two should fit together. Just something like that. Okay, so the first things first, we're going to go ahead and hammer off this twist if we can, which we cannot. See, that's going to cause that problem, like I said, but that's okay. We're going to adjust all this up. So we're just going to hammer out what bit of the twist that we can hammer on and get adjusted. And then when we put the tongs together, we will further adjust, adjust this. Right now, that's not too bad. That got a little bit of the twist out of it. There we have it. Not too bad. Not too shabby. That's not too bad. We'll leave that like it is. We'll go ahead and pull this other one. I'll let this cool naturally. Again, far side edge of the anvil, like we've done in our other tong videos, near side. And by the way, I'm using half on, half off hammer blows. Clean up any sort of little Hammering deals there, looking pretty sharp, looking pretty snazzy. There we go. Nice and clean. That's what we're wanting. Nice clean tongs. Bring these two together. Voila. Just like in other videos, I'm going to let these cool down naturally. Then I will drill the holes so this way it can be riveted together. And then I'm going to forge out this bit here, these reins. So I will be back when it's time to forge out these reins after I've drilled the hole uh, in preparation for these two to get riveted together. Just like you see it there. Okie doke, folks. Just like in previous videos, we are going to go ahead and hammer this to the width of the anvil here. We're roughly about six and a half inches long or so. We're gonna take off the corners to round this up a little bit. I personally am not putting a ton of time into making it perfectly round and smooth. Again, you make it as perfect as you would like and round these up as much as you would like. But for my own purposes, this will work just fine. This shape here. All right. Get that nice and in line. Again, we want this to be really nice and clean looking. And the main goal is just to remove the sharp corners so they don't dig into your hands and fatigue them, fatigue them over a period of time. If you got big rough calluses like mine, or if you in your tong hand you usually use a glove, it won't be too much of a big deal. But again, that's the only purpose of what we're doing here is trying to take off any sharp corner. Super easy. If you want this completely round because that feels better to you, go ahead and do that. So there you go. There's one done. Of course, I went ahead and drilled the hole in it already. Hopefully, you all can see that just fine. So we'll set that off to the side. 
and then we'll pull out the other one. And we'll do the same thing. Turn it. Again, we're just trying to take and knock off the corners of this piece. We're not trying to murder it into a circle. <laughs> Where do you come up with this stuff, Roy? I don't know. I don't know. All right, brush her down really good here. And voila, just like that, that half's done. Now I just need to go ahead and cool off the handle ends, which I'm just gonna do for time's sake because I'm late for dinner. And uh, you know how I feel about that. I don't like being late, late for dinner. I'm gonna go ahead and just quench off those tong ends because they're not essential where you're gripping it at. I'm gonna go ahead and quench those real quick. So this way we can rivet it together and make it all one fail swoop. Okay, there we are. Quench those off. Grab our rivet header that they also make there, our its tongs. We will set a rivet like that, huh? There we go, set it like that. That to go through there. Maybe. There we go. Nice and tight. Again, that's a 5 16 rivet that comes with it. So you drill in a 5 16 hole. You want to make sure it's really nice and snug when you do. And just like in our other videos, we are going to go ahead and pin this cold. So while it's here, a couple of real big hammer blows to set that. Maybe just one more hammer blow like that or two. That way these are now locked together. So when we come back out, make sure that water's off there. Now, when we come back out, we can rivet this down with no problem. And uh, we don't have to mess around with aligning these in the heat of the moment. Okay, got this nice and hot. Again, put the dome side down and now Just rivet that right on down, just like so. You want a nice round appearance if you can get it. That'll be good. So once that's riveted down, I want to just chuck that down on the ground because we don't need that right now. Gonna squeeze it together a little bit and brush this off. Pretty simple, really. Now, depending on the thickness of stock that you're trying to hold and stuff, you're gonna hammer that down. And again, you're gonna adjust this around the piece of stock that you want uh, to adjust this around. So I'm gonna leave it like it is until I decide what I want in my own shop. But you wanna go ahead and work this joint as it cools down. And yeah, that's basically it on these. Now you can go through the additional step if you'd like to. I'm gonna go ahead and skip it since I've been over it a couple times before in the other videos that I've done in this process. But basically, you go to the vise and you can use this tong here to go ahead and put the offsets into the piece itself like that to where your handles line up. I'm gonna leave this one as a consequence to where it just crosses over naturally by the way that it's put together. So hopefully you guys can see that and the way that that just crosses over naturally over at the very end. Um, you could do it either way. If you like the tongs to be perfectly lined up in, in alignment versus where they cross over the whole spance, uh, you can go ahead and put that offset in there. But again, you guys kind of get the point and see how that's done. If you want to see how that's done, you can go back and watch the other videos where I did that. Um, in the playlist here around these RX tongs. Um, so make sure you go check those out. 
uh, for certain. But without further ado, God bless each and every last one of you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button and the bell for notifications, it would mean the world to Jess and I. That's it. God bless. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.